Today we're gonna to talk about EWOT and cancer. Now the link between oxygen and cancer goes back to the 1920s when the Nobel Prize recipient Otto Warburg discovered that he could turn a normal cell into a cancer cell by depriving it of oxygen. He also discovered that cancer grows in an oxygen poor environment known as hypoxia. Hypoxia is simply the medical term for low oxygen. And as recently as 2019, a Nobel Prize was given out to a group of scientists who discovered how the cells deal with low oxygen. In a low oxygen environment, the cells put out signaling known as hypoxic inducible factor. This hypoxic inducible factor is a signal that the cells send out to the rest of the body to allow it to know that they are low in oxygen and it creates a cascade of changes physiologically to allow the body to adapt. However, in cancer, often that hypoxic inducible factor is hijacked. We know, for instance, in kidney cancers, the hypoxic inducible factor causes cancer cell proliferation. We also know the hypoxic inducible factor is very large in breast cancer and many, many other cancers. The reverse of that is also true. It's been discovered that the higher oxygen content in a tumor, it's linked to higher survival rates. And so there's this direct linkage of improved oxygenation at the cancer site will reduce hypoxic inducible factor and reduce cancer cell proliferation. In addition, what we also find is traditional therapies are often not effective in low oxygen environments. Chemotherapy, immunotherapy, radiation therapy, these don't work in low oxygen environments. There's a cancer resistance to treatment. So if we can bring more oxygen to the cancer site, we can reduce that treatment resistance of traditional treatments. So how does EWOT help in cancer? It can help in a variety of different ways. First, it helps directly. When we flood the body with oxygen, we effectively turn off the hypoxic inducible factor, which is responsible for cancer proliferation. Cancer can no longer grow and proliferate in an oxygen rich environment. And then it also can help with traditional cancer therapies by making the tumors less resistant to treatment. Beyond directly affecting cancer and, and helping fight the cancer itself, EWOT also can help with our symptoms. So many folks who have cancer are dealing with a lot of fatigue and often when they're using traditional treatments they'll even have more fatigue. Well fatigue at its base is caused by lack of energy and the gating factor to produce more energy in our bodies is oxygen. So when we flood the body with oxygen, we are feeding all of our mitochondria the oxygen they need to optimize their energy production and they allow all of our cells to work at their best. Anywhere in the body you have inflammation, you have hypoxia, the medical term for low oxygen. And anywhere you have hypoxia, you have inflammation. Those are just two sides of the same coin and we've known about this for many decades. So when we flood the body with oxygen, we are effectively turning off the spigot of that inflammation and helping reduce the inflammation that's already in the body. And for cancer patients, often that inflammation is felt through pain um, and inflammation in various sites on the body. So we can start to turn that inflammation down and help the body avoid further damage. Also, folks with cancer are often dealing with a compromised immune system, especially if they're going through chemo and radiation treatment or immunotherapy, their immune system may not be as durable and able to fight off things like the common cold or other respiratory illnesses, etc. However, when we flood the body with oxygen through EWOT, we are helping to optimize all of our cells and all of our systems because we're giving it the oxygen it needs to produce the energy it needs to do all of its functions optimally. And so immune status goes up 
and there's been some interesting research showing that folks who have cancer and are doing EWOT notice increases in their, their T cells and their immune system and their white blood cell counts, etc. So a lot of good stuff going on there. And then of course, if you're doing traditional treatments, one of the most common side effects can be brain fog. And brain fog is caused by lack of energy in the brain and inflammation in the brain, both of which can be combated through EWOT. And a lot of our customers who are dealing with these sorts of side effects tell us they see great results when they do EWOT in helping clear their brains and allow them to think better. And then the last way EWOT helps cancer patients is it's a great detoxification pathway. Now cancer cells don't use aerobic respiration utilizing oxygen. They generally use anaerobic respiration utilizing glucose as their fuel source. The challenge with glucose is it creates a lot of metabolic waste per unit of energy. And so the body is flooded with all of this metabolic waste. When you also flood the body with oxygen using EWOT, you're able to utilize that oxygen to oxidize these metabolic waste products in a way that makes it easy for your elimination organs to get it out of your body. EWOT also helps detoxify other things in the body. So when we're doing traditional cancer treatments, we are killing a lot of cancer cells. We are also leaving some, in chemotherapy, for instance, we also have a lot of chemotherapy products in our body and we need to eliminate those so our body can rest and repair and get, get stronger. So when we do EWOT, we are helping break those down and eliminate those out of the body so that the body can function more effectively and repair itself more quickly. And lastly, what we hear from our customers who are dealing with cancer is that EWOT is a very effective modality for them. It helps them recover their quality of life. It helps them on their healing journey. And we have many success stories that we hear from our customers every week about how EWOT has been very crucial in their recovery process. So if you have any more questions for us, feel free to come to our website or send us a message. Thank you.